Hello and welcome to our fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. From an air quality index to seismic intensity maps and fast charging batteries, science saw many developments in the past week. We will tell you all about them, but first let's take a look at the headlines. How pure is the air you breathe? The newly launched air quality index will tell you. South India could witness a series of earthquakes soon, warns the new seismic intensity map. A star on Earth will now be a planet in the sky. Minor planet named after Vishwanathan Anand. After a gap of two years, Large Hadron Collider gets back to work. In our in-depth segment, we will discuss about the slow poison called tobacco that is engulfing the country. And now news in details. Smoke, dust and resulting suffocation. How many times have we stepped out of our homes only to wish we hadn't? Now the new air quality index will tell you exactly what the pollution levels outside are so that you can make an informed decision about going out. India's first air quality index was launched recently for 10 cities by the Honourable Prime Minister. Vehicles, industries, pollution and rapidly shrinking patches of greenery. These sites seem to define urban parts of our country. No wonder the air in our cities is fast becoming polluted. We all know about pollution and its dangerous effects on our health. And often we have wished for a yardstick that could actually tell us how clean or polluted the air we breathe is. The answer to this wish is India's first air quality index. The air quality index was launched by Prime Minister Modi on the 6th of April. The air quality index will provide real-time information about pollution levels and help citizens understand its implications for their health. The index will provide one consolidated number and description after tracking eight pollutants to understand the level of air pollution. The index will also use single color coding to describe associated health impacts. Releasing the air quality index, the Prime Minister called for innovative methods to deal with pollution and urged the citizens to change their lifestyles in order to help protect the environment. Hum. कार्बन एमिशन को रोकने के लिए जो सारे नीति नियम बना रहे हैं विश्व के अंदर एक बंधनों की दिशा में हम आगे बढ़ रहे हैं लेकिन हम कोई अपनी लाइफस्टाइल बदलने के लिए तैयार नहीं है द न्यू इंडेक्स विल इनिशियली कवर 10 सिटीज दिल्ली आगरा कानपुर लखनऊ वाराणसी फरीदाबाद अहमदाबाद चेन्नई बेंगलुरु एंड हैदराबाद and will be extended to more than 60 cities. The Air Quality Index assumes extreme relevance as a recent study by the WHO has declared New Delhi as the world's most polluted city. Armed with the Air Quality Index, the citizens hopefully will contribute more towards controlling pollution. dreaded natural phenomenon earthquakes have been a frequent visitor to the Indian subcontinent. As the clock ticks, is the southern part of India nearing an episode of devastation? While a group of researchers have developed a seismic intensity map of South India warning about the looming danger, what would be the consequences and how do we prepare ourselves to face the nature's fury? Here is more. From the 1934 earthquake in Bihar to the tremors of 2001 that shook Gujarat, India has a long and tragic history of earthquakes. Generally calm as a seismic zone, is southern India now gearing up for some moderate earthquakes in the near future? The new seismic activity map seems to warn so. The seismic hazard estimation comes from a team of researchers of the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, led by Dr. P. Anbargan. 
Raising the red alert, the team of scientists have located eight possible future earthquake zones in South India, which may experience earthquakes in the next 50 years. The seismic hazard prediction has been made using a new analysis called Rupture-Based Seismic Hazard Analysis that predicts earthquake hazard values based on minor earthquakes and seismic activity experience. So presently, we attempted rupture-based seismic hazard analysis by giving emphasis to locate a probable future earthquake location as well as find out the representative maximum magnitude. Uh, basically, we try to locate a new earthquake by eliminating the old damaging earthquake and uh, uh, locating the micro earthquakes and uh, seismic sources. So, by eliminating this, we are able to identify the probable locations. So, from the probable location, so we could be able to estimate the representative seismic hazard values. The team has also been able to estimate the maximum magnitude of future earthquakes in these eight zones by taking into account regional rupture characteristics. Based on all the data gathered, the team has produced a map of the overall seismic intensity of southern India. The seismic intensity data is expected to aid in the building of earthquake resistance structures and help in damage estimation and disaster management planning. And here is a question for the geeks among you. What do Roger Federer, Jesse Owens, Arsene Wenger, Donald Bradman and India's Vishwanathan Anand have in common? Well, apart from the common element of sport, they all have minor planets named after them. Yes, the former world chess champion Vishwanathan Anand joined this unique club when a minor planet was named 4538 Vishy Anand after him. Let's take a look at the report to know more about this interesting development. Chess champion from India, Vishwanathan Anand received a heavenly honour recently. A minor planet was named 4538 Vishwanath after the world-renowned chess player. This minor planet is located roughly between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. It was discovered by Kenzo Suzuki of Toyota, Japan on the 10th of October 1988. This name was suggested by Michael Rudenko, a staff member of the Minor Planet Center who is an ardent chess lover. A minor planet is an astronomical object which orbits the Sun but cannot be classified either as a planet or a comet. Minor planets include many types of celestial objects such as dwarf planets, asteroids, trojans, centaurs, super belt objects and trans-Neptunian objects. According to the archives of the Minor Planet Center that operates on the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, the orbits of 670,000 minor planets have been recorded until now. Naming minor planets is an interesting but complicated process that may even take decades and is based on many strict rules. The names are decided by the 15-person committee for a small body nomenclature of the International Astronomical Union. The committee comprises professional astronomers with expertise in minor planets from around the world. Particle beams have now travelled in both directions, inside parallel pipes. Actual collisions mimicking Big Bang will begin in a month. But they will take place with nearly double the energy before. After a gap of two years, the Large Hadron Collider, the largest machine ever built, was restarted on 5th of April. And this time, LHC aims to uncover some potentially game-changing discoveries in physics, including the Dark Universe. After a gap of two years since the discovery of the Higgs boson, the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider, is ready to make yet another scientific discovery. LHC, as the accelerator is fondly known, restarted on the 5th of April at Europe's Physics Research Centre, CERN, after undergoing major upgrades that has doubled its power. With this, scientists hope to glimpse a new physics beyond the standard model. 
According to the reports pouring in from CERN, particle beams have been successfully passed through the parallel pipes of the collider in both directions. Now we have just managed to do the first turn with the anti-clockwise beam, so beam 2. Uh, we have been s threading the beam all along the, the ring and we managed to keep it for 25 turns already without the RF capture, so this is uh, already a big, big success. The proton beams have successfully moved around the 27km tunnel of the underground complex. However, the collision of particles, which actually forms the basis of the experiment, is expected to take at least a month to begin. After the revamping, the collider has acquired the capacity to smash particles together at almost the speed of light and at a collision energy twice that of its first run. The collisions will hence be mini versions of the Big Bang, which is said to be the origin of the universe. What well, next? We, do, we have to continue to correct a little bit the trajectory to make it the beam now do multiple turns. Um, then, we, then we can start capturing it with the RF system. But in the meantime, we'll try the other beam in the other direction and try and get that to the same stage. As an initial step, the protons are injected at a relatively low energy. But over the coming months, engineers hope to gradually increase the beam's energy to 13 trillion electron volts. The answer researchers seek from the data that comes out of the collider is really interesting. Scientists believe that mimicking the Big Bang will give evidence of dark matter, the invisible material that appears to be around galaxies and makes up more than 25% of the universe and hidden extra dimensions. It is also believed that the experiment will give answers to questions like why gravity is so weak compared to other forces of nature and an explanation for why the world around us is not made from antimatter. As scientists attempt to probe the dark universe, which they believe lies beyond the visible one, the Science Monitor team, along with the audience, wishes them all the success. And now it is time to take a short break. We'll be right back. Keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back after the break. You're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in Science Express. Stressing on the potentials of using nuclear energy as a long-lasting and cleaner option, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged the use of nuclear energy to address climate change. The suggestion has been seconded by the French ambassador to India, François Richer. It is also reported that French nuclear company Arriva and Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited will work together. The joint project proposes a nuclear power plant in Maharashtra involving six reactors altogether, which will be of 10,000 megawatt once built, and will be very significant in the part of electricity output of India. Dr. M. Anadurai, Outstanding Scientist and Program Director, Indian Remote Sensing Satellites and Small Satellite Systems, has assumed the office of Director of ISRO Satellite Centre, Bengaluru, on 1st April 2015. Dr. Anadurai has succeeded Dr. S. K. Shivakumar. Associated with ISRO since 1982, Dr. Anadurai is the man behind India's eight INSAT missions and India's first lunar mission, Chandrayaan-1. One of his major contributions is towards the success of Mars Orbiter mission in record time. Dr. Anadurai also has supervised two student satellite projects of the country. According to a recent report, in order to meet its defence need, India is planning to increase the production of multiple barrel rocket Pinaka. Pinaka, first used during Kargil War, is a multiple barrel rocket with a range of 40 km. The system can fire a bombardment of 12 HE rockets in under 40 seconds with a beaten zone of 3.9 square kilometers and destroy a target area of 500 meters to 1000 meters when it hits. With the aim of checking fraudulent activities involving trade of synthetic diamonds, a specialized diamond detection and research center was inaugurated at India Diamond Institute in Western Gujarat on 3rd April. 
since the centre has provision to check the authenticity of diamonds at nominal charges. The step has been taken to counter the illegal trade of lab-manufactured synthetic diamonds from Singapore and China. These synthetic diamonds resemble natural diamonds very closely and even have the same properties. An Indian origin teenage student Pratap Singh has won the prestigious Institute of Physics prize at the National Science and Engineering Competition in Britain. The award which carries a cash prize of 500 pounds was awarded to Pratap Singh for his research on Albert Einstein's special relativity theory. He has created an apparatus to observe relativistic time dilation using simple lab equipment. This can be used to verify an effect of special relativity to detect cosmic ray muons. High energy particles created high above the earth. His research will now be published in international journal Physics Education. We have seen them, known their battle with cancer, and sadly, they are not with us today. Sunita Tomar and Mukesh Harani are just two among the one million individuals who die every year because of tobacco abuse. This is a warning. As we continue to chew, smoke and consume tobacco in countless ways, we are just inching a step closer to cancer, heart diseases and painful death. In our In Focus segment today, we will see how the slow poison called tobacco is engulfing our country and its devastating effects on our health. Sunita Tumar is no more. The world recently woke up to the shocking news as Sunita Tumar, the face of India's anti-tobacco campaign, passed away in her native village in Madhya Pradesh. Sunita, only 28 years old, was battling with stage 4 oral cancer, which her doctors say was caused by years of tobacco use. Most of us must have seen Sunita in the tobacco control announcements that ran on national television and radio in 2014. The 30 second video titled Sunita, which highlighted the devastating effects of tobacco, encouraged the government to mandate graphic warnings on the packs of all tobacco products, smoking and smokeless, from the 1st of April 2015. In our country, where almost one million individuals die every year because of tobacco, Sunita's story is just one amongst many. At the beginning of every movie at public places, on television and radio, we all repeatedly hear the warnings on tobacco use. But how many of us actually pay attention? According to a global survey, there are about 274.9 million tobacco users in India and more than 35% of adults in India use tobacco in some form or the other. What is even more shocking is the fact that our children are not also untouched by this trend. Unfortunately, statistics indicate that a total of 36.9% children in India initiate smoking before the age of 10. Among students, 4.2% smoke cigarettes, while 11.9% students use other tobacco products. People start smoking for different reasons. For relieving anxiety and tension of hectic life, to habit and lifestyle, tobacco users often give many reasons for its usage. But they are not aware that every time they smoke or chew tobacco, they are taking in between 3,000 and 4,000 lethal compounds, which can make them very sick. Tobacco is an abusive substance which most of people use. It, uh, the main ingredient in a tobacco is nicotine and uh, the moment uh, most of people use it, they, they become uh, dependent upon it. These chemicals include toxic alkaloids such as nicotine, nor-nicotine, cotinine, anatabin and anabasin, along with phytosterols such as cholesterol, campesterol and alcohols. Phenolic compounds and acids like chlorogenic and carboxylic acid. Mercury, lead, cadmium and chromium are among the toxic metals present in tobacco besides other trace elements. Have you ever wondered what happens when these compounds reach inside our body? 
Alkaloids like nicotine and no nicotine, when they enter our system through chewed tobacco or cigarette smoke, give rise to compounds such as nitrosin or nicotine or NNN and 4 methyl nitrosamino 1, 3 paradyl 1 butanone or NNK. Such compounds act as cancer causing agents or carcinogens. During the various metabolic processes in our body, carcinogens like NNN and NNK get activated and form intermediates that react and bind with our DNA and cause DNA damage. Damage in the DNA often causes the normal cell growth to go out of control and leads to tumors and cancers. Tobacco products may also activate certain proteins and other factors, thereby causing cancer. Tobacco addiction leads to cancers of the mouth, lungs, pharynx, larynx, esophagus, stomach, pancreas, liver, kidneys, bladder and head. It is also known to cause leukemia or blood cancer. This is clear from the fact that the top 5 to 6 cancers in Indian men are all tobacco related which includes cancers of the lung, oral cavity, larynx, esophagus and pharynx. Whereas in women, these are cancers of the cervix, the oral cavity, esophagus and the lungs. Uh, tobacco is associated with a lot of other cancer. Like in case of female, it, is, uh, it, it can uh, cause uh, breast cancer, uterus cancer, ovarian cancer or in case of male, it can also uh, uh, lead to the liver cancer, uh, stomach cancer. The victims, as we saw in the case of Sunita, sooner or later succumb to the disease even after undergoing surgeries or extensive treatment. Smoking also causes the walls of the blood vessels to lose elasticity, which leads to less blood and oxygen supply to the organs. Hence, not just cancer, tobacco in any form is a major risk factor for heart attacks, respiratory diseases, high blood pressure, atherosclerosis and even strokes. While doom obeys the active smokers, the passive smokers are also at equal risk. By smoking in public, smokers also put the lives of non-smokers at risk. Passive smokers have no control over the amount of smoke inhaled and hence are at greater risk of developing cancer or cardiovascular disorders. The government, in order to control the use and sale of tobacco products, is undertaking massive initiatives under the National Tobacco Control Program. But effective tobacco control depends more on individual awareness. So next time you feed an urge to smoke, remember that each cigarette is costing you, on an average, 11 minutes of your life and endless painful rounds to hospitals. For our own health and for the health of those who are dear to us, let us adopt clean habits. Let us all say no to tobacco. And what are the contributions of science to this week's history? Let us learn in our next segment, History of Science. Victor Francis Hess, an Austrian-American physicist, discovered the cosmic rays during an almost total eclipse of the Sun on the 12th of April 1912. Based on his experiments measuring the ionization radiation in the atmosphere, Hess concluded that since ionization did not decrease during the eclipse, the Sun could not itself be the main source of the radiation. For the discovery of cosmic rays, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1936. Leonardo da Vinci, the Italian artist, sculptor, architect, mathematician, engineer, scientist and writer, was born in the Republic of Florence on the 15th of April 1452. Often described as the epitome of the Renaissance man, da Vinci is known for his technological ingenuity. Greatly inspired by the laws of science and nature, Da Vinci's observations and inventions were recorded in 13,000 pages of notes and drawings. His detailed theoretical explanations included designs for flying machines, plant studies, war machinery, anatomy and architecture, concentrating solar power, etc. His drawings of the Vitruvian Man describes the proportions of the human body. 
His other drawings, namely the fetus in utero, the heart, the vascular system and other bone and muscular structures are some of the first on human record. The Great Indian Peninsula Railway operated the historic first passenger train in India from Buri Bandar in Mumbai to Thane on the 16th of April 1853. The train covered a distance of 34 kilometers. This was the first lead towards the birth of the Indian Railways. The first train was 14 carriages long and drawn by three locomotives named Sultan, Sindh and Sahib. It took approximately 45 minutes to reach Thane. Aryabhat, India's first satellite, was launched on 19th April 1975. Aryabhat was built by the Indian Space Research Organization and launched by the Soviet Union from Kapustin Yar using a Cosmos 3M launch vehicle. Aryabhat was solar powered and was built to conduct experiments in X-ray astronomy, aeronautics and solar physics. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at Vigyan Prasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned to Rajasabha TV and think scientific.